This land can be healed, but you cannot stay here, spirit. You must move on. You are the one who does not belong. I will never abandon my people. Welcome back to another episode on Behold Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look and review Game of the Year Award for Best Independent Game, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. After I saw the trailer for this game coming soon for the Sony's PlayStation 4 and 5, this was a game that looked fantastic with its beautiful environment and an interesting story. I knew this was one of the games that I had to get for the PlayStation 5 and glad I picked up the PlayStation 5 as well. You will see this review for the PC version though of the game and it's very simple. When the time came to pick the game up, this title was for $50 on the PlayStation 5 and literally $20 on sale on the Epic Game Store on PC. I'm pretty much guessing you know which way I took. Kenna Bridge of Spirits was developed and released by Ember Lab for Microsoft Windows and PlayStation 4 and 5. All I have to say is that this game is beautiful. We need to get this out of the way first. The game's environments and detail to lighting is incredible. As I played through any and all parts of the game, I was never not impressed with the visuals as the design team really came through. Visuals are not the only thing that makes the game. Right away, I felt that this game feels like two other games mashed together that would be Dragon Age Inquisition and from the rebooted trilogy of the Tomb Raider series. I know that sounds like a weird mesh, but it really does work. The controls and exploration are very responsive as you explore, climb, and transverse through the world. It does feel a bit like Lara Croft and Tomb Raider, which isn't a bad thing as their controls was one of the main reasons I kept coming back. Same exists here as the player is controlled with very tight controls and always something you would want in an adventure game. The story is that the world has those that have passed on may remain in the physical and spirit world if they were traumatized or have unfinished business. Spirit guides like Kenna are used to help those move on. I sense suffering here, spirit. Do you need help? You know nothing of suffering. This is my home, my village. Turn back, spirit guide. As Kenna travels to an abandoned village, she notices that there's an evil corruption all over the forest, village, and pretty much everywhere she goes. Kenna's job here is to understand the why and to get rid of the corruption doing so. This is where it feels a little bit like Dragon's Age Inquisition. The game has numerous areas where you will use rot companions to help destroy and seal away the corruption, just like the Inquisitor's job to do so around the world in Dragon Age. A bit different in mechanics, but similar theme and seems to really never end. I do love how there are different ways to fight the corruption overall, so that doesn't become stale throughout the game. The action in the game is fairly light, as they do have upgrades that is paced well so you aren't overpowered from beginning to end. It is fun to control Kenna in battles. The controls are quick and responsive and you will need them to dodge or use shields to block. There are life fights around to help you through boss fights as well, but you will have no issues with the fight sequences where I wish there are more of. 
the meat of the game and pretty much the hardest part of the game is the very puzzles in the game. Where the game is very puzzle heavy where you must solve them before moving on. They are nothing where you need to look up on the internet to progress, but some can make you a bit frustrated if you are not the puzzle type like myself. Once you get further and further, items and upgrades help you platform from one area to the next and makes you feel a sense of accomplishment for getting there. You pretty much just feel good the further you progress. The story itself is memorable and emotional. But it isn't the meat of the game. The game is about 10 to 15 hours long, but I do thoroughly enjoy the journey. Although it's laid as an independent game, the overall quality here shines higher than a lot of big budget games. I originally thought this was another great single player game from Sony themselves before later researching the game itself. Although visuals really starts the conversation in any game, the gameplay here really shines in tandem in creating a world that is a bit cut short, but understandable on what the team was trying to do and what they did was fun and memorable. Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, gets an 8.5 out of 10 for its wonderful gameplay and visuals that really keep you busy with heavy emphasis on puzzle solving, mixed in with platforming, and added sequences of action with fun boss encounters that keep the game honest with the best of them in action and adventure games. That's it for me on this look at Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be whole out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Draw on its power.